One year ago today, Jews experienced the worst attack since the Holocaust. Innocent Jews were barbarically slaughtered. Women's bodies were broken from vicious rape. Children tortured in front of their parents. People burned alive and mutilated. 1,200 Jewish lives were horrifically ended that day. And 101 hostages continue to be held by Hamas terrorists responsible for this massacre. And since then, unbelievably, right here in Canada, Jews have experienced relentless anti-Semitism, targeting Jewish business businesses, schools, retirement homes, and synagogues. It is a national failure that Jews no longer feel safe in this country. And yet, Jewish people continue to fight. Their resolve is stronger than ever. Conservatives stand with them and with the State of Israel. We condemn the anti-Zionist hatred and the spineless Canadian leaders who have allowed it to take root here at home. Today, we pray for Israel and for the victory of Western democratic values. Am Israel Hai. Remember Judith Weinstein, a compassionate mother of four whose family spoke glowingly about what an incredible person she was when I had the honor of meeting them a few months ago. Let us remember 1,200 innocent souls taken from us far too soon. May their memory be a blessing, but more than that, may their memory be a revolution, a revolution to bring about a world where violent Jew hatred, like the attacks of October 7th, are unimaginable. Merci beaucoup, mes chers amis. Thank you, Prime Minister, for joining our community during this very challenging moment, for naming terror as terror, terrorists as terrorists, and envisioning a bright future despite all the pain. Your commitment to justice and peace reminds us of the values that guide us as Canadians. Toda Rabah, thank you. I now welcome the Honourable Pierre Polyev, Leader of the Opposition, to speak. Shalom. Merci. Thank you. Today, our ears are filled with the echo of horror. Our eyes are darkened with the shade of genocidal cruelty. 365 days ago today, we saw exacted upon the Jewish people the worst and most deadly attack since the Holocaust, an attack carried out by a genocidal death cult, Hamas. They targeted, deliberately targeted civilians, children. They burned people alive, tortured children in front of their parents. They mutilated dead bodies. And then they displayed their cruel, sadistic, diabolical horrors in posts that they would put on the internet, not even trying to conceal their evil. And why did they do it? Not because there was an occupying force they were trying to expel. Israel had voluntarily expelled itself from Gaza 15 years ago, through the incredibly painful and even controversial decision to arrest its own citizens and drag them out of the Gaza Strip into Israel proper, leaving Hamas the ability to govern that land without any interference whatsoever from Israel, but with, of course, total occupation by the terrorist regime in Tehran. And why now? Why at this moment, suddenly, after 15 years? Was it because war was breaking out? Exactly the opposite. It was because peace was breaking out. Israel...
Israel had just successfully signed the Abraham Accords with multiple Muslim Arab states with momentum towards a potential deal with Saudi Arabia. Imagine that, the Jewish state signing a peace deal with the home of Mecca and Medina. What a bright new era that would be for everyone, everyone except for the tyrants of Tehran, for which such peace would be their worst nightmare. And so to interrupt the potential of that harmony, the instigated, planned, financed, and coordinated this direct assault, and since that time have unleashed a seven-front war on the Israeli people, a war that has been relentless and cruel. But before we talk further about that, let us take a moment to honor the victims, let their memories be a blessing, to think of the courageous hostages and their families in anguish. Bring them home. And yet, Jews here at this home are re-victimized again and again. After watching the Jewish homeland torn apart by this genocidal attack, now they see, they see the same motives and vicious hatred carried out on our very streets, with a staggering increase in hate crimes, most of them directed at the Jewish people. Why now? Why now? Now, we might say, well, of course, because tensions are inflamed by the war between Hamas and Israel. But wait, this is not the first war that Israel has had to fight. There have been countless wars where Israel has had to defend its very existence. And those wars did not spill onto Canadian streets. In 2000, it's true. It's true. In 2008 and 2007, 2006, when Israel was forced to fight back against Hezbollah in Lebanon, there was no violence on our streets. We did not have hate crimes overtaking Jewish communities, protests at Jewish hospitals, Jewish homes, Jewish businesses. When there was conflict again in 2014, that did not spill into our streets. So why now? Why all of a sudden? Has this hatred found such a home here in Canada? Now, some say it's because our people are flawed. The government needs to fix the people, censor the people, better control and corral the people. Well, is it really the people who are the problem? It wasn't the people who appointed Laith Maruth, an anti-racism expert, after he had said, and I quote, life is too short for shoes with laces or for entertaining Jewish white supremacists with anything but a bullet in the head. Given a Government of Canada grant, this individual supposedly to fight racism. Or Birju Dutani, appointed as the commissioner of the Canadian Human Rights Commission. After he wrote, Terror is, an, is not an irrational strategy pursued solely by fundamentalists with politically and psychologically warped visions of a new political, religious, or ideological order. It is, in fact, a rational and well-calculated strategy that is pursued with surprisingly high success rates. The head of our Human Rights Commission. Or an Ontario school that forced children to attend an anti-Israel protest. Kids divided and told to wear different colors to identify their ethnicity in Canada. My friends, this ideology that seeks to divide our people based on race and ethnicity, that has led to these horrifying outbursts of hatred, are not from the bottom up, they are from the top down. And it has been further accentuated by a government that has let in 
someone who appears to have been led into Canada and given citizenship to someone who appeared to be in a video mutilating a, a citizen on a crucifix in the Middle East on behalf of ISIS, someone who then went on to try and stage another attack in Canada. Yet another terrorist came into Canada preparing to stage an attack from Canada to Jews in New York. All of this while our tax dollars fund UNRWA, an organization that has helped carry out the attacks of 9-11, uh, of October 7th. So, when they say that the government needs to be the watchman of the people, I say, who watches the watchman? I say, it is not for the government to change the people, it is time for the people to change the government. When I stand here today with, you, with my brilliant and courageous heroine deputy leader, the great Melissa Lanceman, and reiterate the commitment that I've made to you and that I've made to our Muslim brothers and sisters, and that is that we will always take one stand. No matter where we are, we as Conservatives will say the same thing. I love the Muslim people, and when I go into their mosques, and I do proudly visit their mosques, I tell them I am a friend of Israel. I say the same things there that I do here. We can no longer accept political parties sending one MP into one place to say one thing and another MP into a different place to say exactly the opposite. We will put behind us this ugly ideology that has divided our people, and we will reclaim the country that we knew and love. And we will do it based on the teachings of the great Wilfrid Laurier, if, you'll mind, if you don't mind me praising a liberal. He was asked, what is Canada's nationality? And he could not list an ethnicity or a religion. We were already mixed up way back then. We had people from all over the world. So he said, Canada is free, and freedom is its nationality. We united around the idea that it didn't matter where you came from, it mattered where you were going. We united around the idea that you could worship God in any way you chose, that you had the freedom to think what you wanted, say what you wanted, be who you wanted, and to be left in peace with your family. And that is the principle that will unite us again. You have my word that I will stand up for freedom here at home and around the world. We will secure our borders to keep terrorists out. We will. Def I will make clear to universities that if they spread anti-Semitism or make Jews feel unsafe and uncomfortable on their campuses, they will not be eligible for federal funding. We will defund anti-Semitic organizations and activists. We will defund UNRWA and give the money to the Palestinian people who are suffering. I will, I will vote against anti-Israel resolutions at the United Nations. I will back Israel's right to defend itself, which includes retaliating against those that attack Israel. Israel must be able to prevent Isra Iran from using nuclear weapons if necessary. That means proactively striking Iranian nuclear sites and oil installations to defund the terrorist regime. We will keep our fists closed to terrorism, but our hands open to peace. We must work with the Saudis, the Emiratis, the Qataris, and anyone who's willing to talk and work and build towards a greater peace, including the permanent recognition of Jewish 
the Jewish state's right to exist as a Jewish state now and forever. This is the bright future we have in store in a land where all the Abrahamic people can enjoy their religious places of worship in peace and in harmony the way Canada once was. That is the way that we can rekindle the memories of those brilliant souls that we lost a year ago today. I was speaking with Rabbi Mendel Kaplan and I asked, how do I address the loss and find some glimmer of hope in it? And he said that those we lost can live on, on this world, in this world, even as they've passed into the next. And I said, how? He said, by carrying on the Jewish traditions that animated them. He said, a thousand years from now, we can honor them by having an Israel that carries on the traditions that have been there a thousand years before. We just passed the new year. It's 5,785. So together with the rabbi, wrote a little poem about what Israel will look like in 6,785. Against all odds, Israel stands strong. Friends by her side, where they belong, in 6785 we'll see her people firm, eternal, free, as Shabbat, as Shabbat candles flicker bright, mothers welcome Friday night, their flames a beacon ages old, a thousand more this story told. The shofar's call at Rosh Hashanah echoes through time, a sacred drama. Awakening souls since times of yore, a thousand years and many more. On Yom Kippur, in solemn prayer, they cleanse the slate with tender care. Repairing bonds with, with the divine, traditions lasting past our time. Masuzas guard each doorway's frame, yarmulkes worn without shame. Stars of David, proud and bright, eternal symbols of their might. The Jewish people tried and true on Simcha Torah, spirits renew, dancing with scrolls, joy undenied. Shema Yisrael, they've always cried. All foes who sought to break their will now lie defeated, cold and still, condemned to history's trash they fall, forgotten, they're disowned by all. Yet Israel's children stand keeping alive throughout the land the memory of those who fell in Jewish hearts their stories dwell unbroken they'll endure each test their timeless faith forever blessed the culture and tradition never die and still they'll say I'm Yisrael hi thank you